six packs in a big bag of ice. The intro six packs in a big bag of ice. You know, we have cold winters and, and hot summers, so I need to have a dual stage temperature controller on my ferment, uh, fermenting fridge. So I know I can buy a dual stage Ranco controller and pretty much have it ready to go out of the box, but I wanted to try this project where I use the Love Controls dual stage controller. And if you wanted to know uh, which model this is, it's the uh, TSS 2 2100. And you can see this is the uh, the one eighth din size, um, nice and compact, and it does have the the two um, the, the two, uh, two separate controls basically for heating and cooling at the same time. So uh, a lot of single stage controllers can be switched to do either heating or cooling, such as the um, the, uh, the A419 electronic controller, you can swap that between heating and cooling, but you have to manually switch it back and forth. Dual stage controllers will switch uh, a heater and a cooling device or a refrigeration device on and off uh, completely independently or automatically, I should say, depending on what the, uh, the set point is calling for. So I wanted to be able to wire this thing up to handle um, both a, a heater and the refrigerator. Um, so I went to Lowe's and I bought a few parts and I'll just let you know what those are. Um, first thing is, is this is the love controls. I got this from Dwyer and this is the TS2 um, temperature probe that goes with this. Okay, that was about $90 shipped. Okay, now I went to Lowe's. I got myself a, uh, a 14 gauge air conditioner extension cord. I wanted it to have this angled plug on here and the plan is to just cut the female end off and wire it right into the controller. Also I wanted to have a duplex receptacle where I'm going to disconnect the uh, the bridging here so that one of the receptacles or outlets is for the heater and one is for the refrigerator. All right. And in order to get all of that in I got this project box. I think it's a 4x4x2 four by four by inch um, weatherproof project box. Okay, so price-wise, this is about $12. This is between six and seven dollars, six and change. Um, you can get one of these for like 79 cents if you get the cheap ones. So, but one of the things was, is I found this to be one of the most expensive pieces here, and I realized that um, my city recycling center has a place where people drop off refrigerators and air conditioners, so um, rather than drop the 12 bucks here, I scraped um, together this uh, cord that I cut off of a uh, dehumidifier at the recycling center. Okay, so it's basically the same thing, 14 gauge conductor, which I always recommend. Um, most extension cords come with 16 gauge. Uh, I would avoid that um, because we're dealing with a refrigerator, higher amperage. Um, you could get away with a 16, but anyway, I'm gonna take this back. So I just basically took 12 bucks off of the project. Um, so now I'm left with basically seven dollars eight dollars maybe uh completely for that um so overall the project is still within the bounds of a dual stage ranco controller um so what i did here was i i took this and centered it on one side of the box and sort of got an idea of where i wanted to place this um, but if you have an old scrap cover that's a good way of marking the rest of it to know where everything has to go and I'm just gonna hold this on here trace this mark the center hole there so you can see I got a basic shape of what what this needs to look like okay so that's for the outlet side the other side is for this so I just held this up here and marked the line it's somewhat straight I'm not going to stress too much about having it perfect so I really don't know what exactly what I'm doing here I'm sort of wigging it but um, first thing I noticed is that those uh, mounting wings are going to have to come off of the receptacle because they won't fit in there so I'm just going to uh, score the back of this here So 
lock this into my vise, but then I'd have to move the camera. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the most elegant way of taking that off, but um, in any case, it was fine. And lock it in the vise next time before I cut it. Okay. So now I know that that will fit in there and I'll secure it to the box with this uh, act as if this was the, the cover plate. So I'll use the middle screw to, to hold that in. All right, now that I crudely cut out the basic shape, I have a few hand files that I'm gonna use to uh, sort of clean it up, make the corners more sharp. Okay, so the moment of truth is you dry fit the, uh, the controller. And see the the rough cut doesn't really matter that much because there's a little bit of a flange around here. And um, looks pretty good. All right, given the fact that it wouldn't be too interesting to watch me sit there filing, I skipped ahead a bit, and uh, I'm going to let you know what I did. Um, so I continued filing until this duplex receptacle fit in here nice and neatly and tight, and I put the screw down in the middle here. I also drilled a hole for the power cable to come through and also for the probe wire to go through. Um, I'm not using any strain reliefs or anything. This is a thick plastic and it's not really a sharp edge or anything. And the, the jacket on both of these is tough enough um, to handle it. When the power cord came in here, I left some of the jacket uh, on there and I s split it into two pieces and then tied it into a knot twice. So now you, know, you can't pull this out and rip some of the wires out. So the way this is wired is really simply actually um, the the power cable obviously has um, hot, neutral, and ground. The ground goes directly to the ground screw on the receptacle because there's no other place to ground on this. Uh, if this was a metal box, obviously you'd want to ground to the box as well. Uh, the hot, the black, goes directly to uh, the common for both of the relays that are built in. Because this is a dual stage controller, it has two um, double throw relays, meaning it's got a normally closed shown here and a normally open and that's repeated for both of the relays. So it goes to the hot, the black in the power cable goes to the number 7 terminal as well as the number 10. So I basically just stripped a, a portion of the wire and folded it over and shoved it into that number 7 and then I ran it over to the number 10. Now while you're at it, you can also stick a, a wire in there uh, to run to the power supply for, to actually power the controller itself. So that'll go to either four or five. So the last thing you have to concern yourself with is the connections from the relay outputs of the controller to the hot terminals of each of these receptacles or outlets. Uh, again, I broke the shunt off so that these will be powered completely separately. Now for relay number one or output number one, uh, I'm taking a wire from terminal eight, which is the normally open terminal, and I'm running that to one of the screws here. Now I'm going to use um, output number one as my heating outlet, and then terminal 11 is the normally open terminal on output 2 and I'm running that to the other side of the outlet and this will be for my cooling circuit which will be the refrigerator. All right, So basically everything has connections except for terminal 2 that's the secondary probe that I'm not using and I'm also not using the normally closed outputs number 6 and 9 on the uh, the relay outputs but other than that everything's connected. 
okay and I made up a, uh, a nice cover here with labels for which one's heating and which one's cooling and while I'm testing everything and making sure it's working I'm just gonna put a piece of electrical tape over those terminals so that now this is relatively safe to handle um, without the lid on all right so one word of warning since you're only using one probe here when you first plug this in the factory settings assume that you're going to be using two probes and an alarm will go off um, telling you that there's a one of the probes are malfunctioning now I have the unit powered up and I have some Christmas lights plugged in to the heating and cooling circuits and I'm just representing the heating with the red and the cooling with the white and I just wanted to mention there's a lot of different programming parameters that you can set in this thing and it's a little bit daunting at first to understand exactly what's going on because the instructions aren't um, all that clear um, but I can tell you that to get into the parameter programming mode you hold the set button down for eight seconds okay so that's the set point one set point two and there's a bunch of other parameters like the differentials what the min and max temps are whether or not the uh, relays are activated at the set point or deactivated um, you could also change that sort of effect by whether or not you wire to the normally open and normally closed um, so even if you were to wire it one way and seal it up you can program uh, programmatically switch whether or not you're normally opening or normally closing um, one of the things that I wanted to also mention is that uh, once you're out of the um, programming mode which you do by pressing set and down at the same time um, the default uh, reading on the screen here is the actual temperature as measured by the probe and once you set sort of the background parameters setting your um, heating and cooling set points are is relatively easy just by pressing the set button so right now you can tell it's blinking and that's telling me that I'm setting uh, the set point and the the dot right on the out one side over here is telling me that I'm setting the temperature or set point for the first relay so since I'm using that for my heating mode, I have this set to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, when it when it drops to 67, it will engage the heating circuit. Now, if I press set again, you see the dot moves over to the out two, and that means that I have my set point two at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means if I reach that temperature, my cooling circuit will kick in to turn the compressor and the refrigerator on. All right, so you see I have um, three degrees in between those two. So now you can see the actual probe is reading 75 degrees, and because that's over 70, my cooling circuit is on. Now I just wanted to sort of demonstrate how this would work. Um, let's say that the probe was on the fermenter and the refrigerator is cooling it down, so I have some ice water here. So let's just see if we'll drop it down below 70. Okay, so there's 69. So because it's still above 68, all right, the heating circuit's going to kick on. Hope this is some help for you. I mean, if you really wanted to take some shortcuts, you could just get the dual stage Ranco controller, which is pretty much what this box is, and it has pretty much the same programming features. I just thought it was a, a neat little project to put together. Alright, so if you have any questions about it, probably by the time you ask them I'll know more, a lot more about this than, uh, than I do right now. See you later. I like cold beverage, yeah.